This is Seb Shaw from SNS Loft. Uh, today we're here at uh, Jim Johnson's uh, uh, in Willenhall, uh, West Midlands, and uh, we're going to take you on a very quick tour of uh, Jim's lofts. Right, here's the man himself. So, Jimmy, you lead the way and show us around your loft, mate. We'll leave those of it because. Uh, yeah, we'll leave them for later. We'll leave them for later, is it? Because. Uh, the, uh, Paul, he likes the, uh, the light pigeon. Right. Which is started with just three pair. Mm -hmm. And he's just bred out of those. Uh, Paul's. Right. Paul, come here. Right. Well, Here's Paul. Here's Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello. Hello. How are you, mate? You Hello. right? And, uh, well, I can say, I ain't particularly bothered about the light birds. Right. Paul was interested about six years ago now. And within six years, he'd be trying to fly a kit of pigeons. No success, because of the orc. Right. I keeps trying and trying, but this is what Paul's bred out of bronzes and checkers. Right. Because I often get a, one or two bronzes. Hmm. So he just paired these all back into each other. And they've cut, as you can see, they've come a bit lighter. Yes, they have some, yeah. yeah. Oh, here comes another one. So that's his little... Play shed. This is the play shed for Paul. Brilliant. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, lovely. So, if we want to go in and look at some, uh, yeah, the old type blue chicked pigeons that originally come from Wilf Lovett himself. Yeah. Okay. Through Albert Archer. Right. Oh, brilliant. And most of these birds was bred through one of the checkered cocks, blue chick cock that Wilf Lovett flew 20 hours. Right. And that's my family. And these are the direct descendants of that? Yes. Right, excellent. And pigeons that I flew myself, 18, 19 and 20 hours, all mixed in. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You can see the sub noise pale blues. Yeah. The blue checkers came oh, many years ago. I only bred one, now I get lots of them. Mm. But I'm not particularly bothered because... But this mine. is a hen, I would take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She looks lovely, doesn't she? And you just, uh, you're flying this these days, are you flying these at all? Well, these. I tried seven out. Right. And I lost five blue checkers. Right. And I only got two back. But okay, well, you're just breaking them, and they all can't see them. They're here, right. there, and everywhere. But the minute they get together, they go up nice and tight. Right. You can get away with it about once. The second time, it's all over. All right. So this is this is your flying section, right? Yes. So you've got what 15, 15 flying boxes, does it? Yep. And There'll be fifteen there. Yeah. And these big boxes over here. Right. Are for when I take the young birds away and wean them off. All right. So these are the weaning cages, the weaning yeah, boxes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. And it, this is where you keep your corn and all that. Yeah. Brilliant. 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 I used to wean them off in here because there right. was twenty odd boxes, single boxes in there. Yeah. But Getting old, you don't want to bend down there. Stay, no, I take stay, it, yeah, yeah, I take it, you're right. Okay, these were the older ones, right, yeah. fair enough. Well, my stock ends will go in there after. Right, okay, when you separate them later. Yeah. All yeah. right, right. Mm. Right, so that's it, you've got no youngsters whatsoever in there now. 
in the, the meaning side. I'll lose them out there, slap yeah. through the window. And then we go into the flight. Yeah, so as I can have a good look around, see where they are. Yeah, brilliant. Then brilliant. I train them to come through there into the, the big boxes. Right. And once I think they're old enough, right. and they're starting to fly, I'll wait, put them into single boxes and feed them separate. Right, 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 okay, then the feed up begins. Well, they don't get no feed up. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what they're saying, through the bellies to the brain. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And you've got to keep them under your control. Don't yeah. let them do what they want to do. Spot on, sir, spot on. And it's best to learn them everything as I'm young. Mm. So as I remember. So how does, uh, so I mean, so you've got a pulley system here, have you? Well, I should have another string on the top. Right. I'll use the old stick. Right. Put it in there, push it open. Right. I shut it before I don't, then I Right, 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 get you, get you, get you. And then Very convenient. Under your control. Yes. Like the same the rules, you must be, the birds must be under your control within the hour. Absolutely. So, put them in there, the under my control. Brilliant. Get them brilliant. in, check the rings. Check them out, check them in. Check them in, check them out, check them in. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Right, brilliant, brilliant. And so, where does the magic happen? Where's the breeding loft? The magic happens in there. Hey, excellent. Oh, brilliant. Look at that. Oh, better get in here. Excellent. Oh, look at that. That's so beautiful, bro. Yeah, look at that. that. How old is that pigeon, Jim? It's only last year's old. I said to myself, I will ship all the old stock, which was eight and ten years old. Right. I started fresh this year. Yeah, yeah. Sixteen birds. You may want to tell me more about it if you want to come inside and just point out the pairs to me and uh, any sort of uh, history in, uh, to them, please. Well, really, them all through, like I say, yeah. 18, 19 and 20 birds. Right. And the great grandfather to them look similar to that bird. Right. Blue, I, I, blue, I, I, blue that chick. is really nice, you know. That blue one. Chick. Honestly, as soon as I saw it, I absolutely thought, I thought you must be one of the, there we go. There and go. he's friendly as well. Yeah, they're all friendly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. It's really, really like him. So these are all the cockbirds here, right? And it's just a couple of youngsters as well, isn't they're it? They're all last year's birds I am breeding off at the Right. Moment. So what do you do with the older ones, the ones which are older at, uh, say, is it silver? Yeah. It's really neat. Silver end. Right, okay. Right, brilliant, brilliant. Nice pair of blues on the top there. Yeah, that's, that's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. I've got the two blue youngsters in there are off there. Off these? Yeah. You, you like to show it to me? Which one are they? Let's get over there. He's one. All right, excellent. Yeah. And the other one's there in the second bedding. Right, there we go. It's really, really nice. They're credits here, sir. They are absolutely credits here. And, uh, As you can see, I do, do yeah. breed one or two bronzes. You're right. They're really, really, really nice. The first time I've seen your birds, to be honest. That's the first time I've seen them. And they're absolutely... Well, you shouldn't find any purer, because I've had them nearly 40 years now. Mm. They're not... Um, they're not sitting eggs at the minute, they should have been parted over three weeks ago. Right. I don't like late breaks really. Really? No. Uh, a good idea for these right. is in the winter, uh -huh. those double up uh, yeah. as single boxes. Oh, excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then if I want to pair them up, mm -hmm. the cocks dominate a box. So mm -hmm. If I want an end, I'll put the head in there and the top will, and then when they get fun, mm. to pair it up, I just open it up and let them have all the box. Brilliant. And when Brilliant. they are paired up, when mm. I get the ball in, that goes back, and that's where they sit. Just like that. Superb. And so I see you've got 
four, four, eight. Seven. Eight K seven, is it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I normally only keep six pairs. Right, right, right. So you you got six breeding pairs then, is it at any one yeah, time? I've got seven at the minute. Okay, so eight boxes you've got, that's what I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, just in case I want to put another yeah. pair together. But you'll always put seven. How many rounds we're looking at, Percy? Uh, per, Three of the most. Three of the most? Yeah. Right, okay. And how how many would you be, uh, what do you call it, uh, well, serving to the peri? To the what? To the peregrine. How many? Um, what, are, what are your losses? Too many. Yeah, I think that's a story with everyone, Too isn't it? Many. That's a story with everyone. I mean, years ago, out the six pair, I could break 30. Right. Breaking in, perhaps losses of 10. Right. I'd sell 10 and keep 10 for flying. Right. But it's okay. not that easy today. No, it's not. No, no, no it's a lot. I haven't flown properly now for full, about 10 years, so. Right. So are you actively still flying, or are you just flying for pleasure? Keep trying. Right, 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 right. The, it's only feeding the pedigree. It's true, it's true. Yeah, as soon as you start building some times up, yeah. you start getting hit. Yeah. Yeah, so I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is, it is like going to the sweet shop for yeah, 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 it is. Oh, it's it is. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they get up too high, really. These yeah. birds. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So they, these are, what would you say, they are mid range or high flyers? What would you say? How old is this guy? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yes. All right, let me just quickly get these beauties in here. Right, so these are some of the youngins of uh, Jimmy Johnson and some uh, beautiful specimen of birds here. This, guys, look, this is the first time I'm actually seeing them too. And I am absolutely surprised. I really am. Uh, oh, look at that cockbird. Could you tell me more about that one over there, sitting in the middle? Yeah, that really looks nice. That one of the been just Oh, about, it's yeah. a, the blue cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There again, if you look at them, yeah. they got a not too big beak. Nice no, uh, let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, and what, what sort of what colour eyes do they throw back? Do they vary in eye colour? No, they don't vary. They stop as they are. They're red and pink. I don't like bull eye. I right. don't like yellow eye. Right. That's that's proper colour of a chipler eye, I would say. See, right. What put me on to this? So we're looking at pearl eye. Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, we're looking nice at pearl, pearl eye. eye. Right. Yeah, that's the short just... beak. Again, yeah, yeah, not yeah. Too yeah, long. Yeah. They're not too long in the leg. So do they have colour variations as well? I can see, like you, you. I mean, would the checkers go a bit lighter on the beak, and would they? The, uh, would the blues go darker on the beak? The, the beak itself is always dark. Right. But the wattles on the top. The wattles they're are always right. white. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, um, that's that, yeah. Wattles. We can see the wattles as well. So basically, so in, because you see, like you've got, uh, we got, I've got Shannons, and they're certain that we'll have a darker beak. The other ones will have a lighter beak. You so see, we're in that. It's the badges, isn't it? Some it is the badges. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, the yeah. blue ones will be darker. Big darker. It's yeah. true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Got a nice round like an apple at the front, all the muscle. Yeah, yeah, I can see nice that. Nice short in the leg. Absolutely, it's a V shape, isn't it? Found. Can we, can we, can we say, can we summarise it as V shape? What the bird itself? The bird itself. It tapers to. Tapers, yeah, yeah because yeah, that's what yeah, I'm looking yeah. over there, and yeah. I'm actually uh, quite. And look at that silver. Could you tell me more about that silver over there? Is that there? There. That's in that corner. In that corner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little silver end. Yeah, see yeah. See the, the colour. Of, I don't know if it's the colour of the bed. That brings a colour in the beak. Right. Because that's a silver and it's a bit lighter. You get me? So that's what yeah, I was referring the dark to. Dark blues I got dark beaks. Yeah, yeah. This is what I that's what I picked up straight away when I came in I looked at look at the checker as well. Here on the right, on the right, third on the right. Can yeah. you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, a little play checker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I just I like to pair a clay uh, a silver as we call it. Yeah. To a blue. Yeah, and what's the throwback? Anything or uh, uh, blues and Silvers, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. right. But really, really, that honestly, I'm, 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 I wasn't expecting to be taken back by your birds, honestly. Oh. It's, it's, it's really, really, because what I'm trying to do at the moment is uh, at my loft. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to like uh, just concentrate on uh, what Harry gave me. Yeah. And I was going to just, just to just basically. Well, if your fly badge is all white wings, you'll see. A no, more or less on any sky of a night. Mm. But if it, if you're flying blues, 
You have a job to find them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to wait for them to cross a cloud or something. Yes. Whereas if they're up in the blue, yeah. you have a right job finding them. A what? blue on a nice sky. On a, yeah, you can't, you're not going to do that. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Really. That's mm. what I find anyway. Mm. That one, yep. clay silver, yep. is out the bronze. Right. And uh, the checkering, cl a clay checkering. Similar to this bird. Yeah, here. There we go. No, that's the youngster. Where are we looking at? Where's he gone? Might be here somewhere down at, at, at the bottom. Well, it'll be similar to this one anyway. Right, so that's a look. Yeah. A bronze and one like that and throw a clay silver. Mm. And this is what they throw back, they don't throw back any other mutation or anything no, like that? No, no white wings, no, no, nothing. no, no, nothing. Okay, okay, that, okay, a okay. white wing, I love it. Right, okay, okay. Uh, so, whereas I think in terms of Paul's birds, they would be, they be, they've got similar, they do different throwback, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. They've got totally different throwback. Light to light. Yeah. If you put light to light, they'll get lighter. Right, right, because that's what I, I saw, uh, I think there were about three, 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 uh, three birds in it. Uh, Davy had some as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, I actually seen a yellow in Albert's loft. That's Albert's art store. Yeah. He used to breed for Wilf, time to time. Yeah. And um, he had a yellow in, and it took me 25 years to breed one yellow. Oh. And that's in Paul Shed, yellow model. I think I've probably seen one at Davies, that's probably off him, off that bird. Could be. It could be off that bird, because yeah. I've seen one at Davies. Yeah. Originally, I only had three pair, mm. and I had a, an old Lloyd Print 10, 1970, mm -hmm. and a 1975 bronze model, and then was direct off Albert. Right, right. This on the left would be... Let's just have a look. And these are dropper shed. Yep. Yeah. Always keep them hungry. Yes. To play back as a forward, otherwise Absolutely. you won't get your triplers down. So what what strain? Any particular strain? No, 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 no. Them are just licorice or sort droppers. Right, as long as they can I be call spotted them droppers in, in the dark. The tumblers. The tumblers, yeah. But I've been to uh, trying to breed. Right. A few like that. Uh huh. And then we're across magpie and uh, a nectar. Right. There's about six in there now, and right. I want to I want to try and breed them because they come out similar to uh, a ghost badge. Right, 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 right. But uh, the money droppers, keep your droppers hungry, always. Keep them hungry. That's 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 that, that's the, that's a common denominator. And that's what they've got to get. They've got to be really hungry and play because you want them tiplers down. Of course, I mean you, they're signalling, isn't it? So you need that strong signal. Yeah. That signal needs to be very strong. The Absolutely. same with the tiplers. They've yeah. got to get used to when the droppers come out. It's time mm. to come down. And if you're flying in the dark. You've got to get used to them lights coming on. Mm. And you've got to have your droppers hungry to play in the dark. Sure, 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 Obviously. Sure. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. So, say, to the brain, it's through there. So uh, yes, it is, it is. It all yeah. the while. Absolutely, yeah. fully really agree with that. And uh, in terms of your, uh, the light for the, uh, your dark system or the dark training, so I only see that light over there. So, And uh, there's one over there. And I think it's, yep, that's there. And. So is it down? Cast the shadow, because it could be frightened of the round shadow. Of course, yeah, yes, 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 so yes. So you yes, try yes, to yes. Get, do away with the shadows. Hmm. Uh, and any trouble with the neighbours? Uh, or a light, something no, like no, that? No, 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 I've been here. Well, I've been here 40 years, of course, now. I've never had any trouble with the neighbours. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm far enough away from the house, 75, yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And if you're breaking youngsters in, I only give them two chances. If they drop on the roof, they don't get another chance. Right. Where do they go? Yes, they. Yeah. In the, in the green bin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, it's true. No, you got to. You got, got to have this Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. 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 What I tend to do <coughs> sometimes, I put them in the shell cages on the floor. Right, which are, yes, yes. What you'll find with some beds is when you open that and they come out, it's like as if the top of the shed is like red hot and they just come out and touch it, gone. Mm. So I think if I lose them out from there, they're already on the floor. 
the only place next door to that is the shed. Right. Get a bit of luck, and I'm hungry. With them. If I'm really hungry, I'm hungry. So we don't mind leaving them out with the droppers. You've got to always have mad with the droppers, obviously. Mm -hmm. When you first break in a minute, and then you just get the droppers away and let them have a go on their own. But as soon as the droppers come out, they should know it's time to come down and fill. Uh, same in the dark, just playing back to the phones for a bit. Right. So just just basically just getting them custom. Yes. Custom to the whole whole shenanigans of the routine. It is, it is, it is, it is. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right. I mean some some of the uh, some of the prints, like the uses, they're that wild, they just come out, push, go. Hmm. I've seen this happen. So well, especially Tommy's birds. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying, I mean, Tommy was kept most of the time, he had to stay up all night. Yeah. And the following morning, about eight ish or so, the birds used to drop. Are you going to show me into your diplomas? Um, we, we used to have a fly between an English club or all England and the Germans. Right. Um, 99. That's 99, that's 99, 99. as well. That's 16 out of four. And that, that is 1941. Yeah. That was an old bird, and I'm sure that was a young bird. Uh, yeah. yeah. If, the, if the Worcester put the date on... They, they, they didn't put a date on it, did they? So they put... It's 99, so... Yeah, that's a long day. International yeah. young bird fly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So... I put the other ones on there. Right, these are the NTU ones as well then. Yeah, there's yeah. NTU. Yeah, we would like to see some of them, definitely. And what I did, once upon a time, yeah. I just picked a fly out. Yeah. <sighs> National record of achievement. Superb, superb. All right, there we go. There I'll we go. Put them up, put down a light on. Yeah. Stick them to the door. Yeah, I would do. And there we go. Right. Okay. Right. These are from. This is nine twenty first of June, nineteen eighty one, and that was that was third position with nineteen hours ten. That's back back then. Yes. That yeah. Back then. Now do you be you be winning the sort of that you be the first national with that sort of time nowadays, isn't it? But it's only because the orc. I mean. Yeah. We know I flew with them. Hmm. I was flying against three to four hundred Peep, yeah. people. Yeah, 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 that's correct, yeah. Now, the all spoiled it. Right. And it's also spoiled it for the uh, the farmers, because the farmers sell corn to the pet shop, the pet shop blues, we have clay bowls made. Yeah. So, who's going to make them? If yeah. Not really, I mean, there's a lot of people wrapping up, yeah. so there's a lot of people losing a lot of money. Yeah. This is from 1985. This is down 20 hours, one minute, and this is from 1980, 25th of May, 1980, on my right, and that's uh, 17 hours, 52. Uh, this is signed by Ken Potts, isn't it? Yeah. And this is signed by Paul Bowden. I just want to see... He's the chairman of the NTU at the yeah. time. Yeah, and this is by uh, Jay Cullen. Johnny Cullen. Yep. And uh, this is Bowden as well. All right, you want to you want to go through and take me through those diplomas, mate? Well, yeah, that's 20, 20 hours. Oh, I always wanted my name on the long day cup. Right. And when I done twenty hours one, mm. uh, Mr. Rosebottom mm -hmm. in Ireland did twenty hours two. Oh dear! Losing it by one, one minute. minute, sixty seconds. That's nineteen eighty. 1752. Yeah. What's he said? Novice. Novice, yes. Then there was. Yeah, 90, that's your first fly then, as a novice. Yeah. Wow. 1980, that's no, 25th. One, one of them I joined in 79. Right, 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 right. And right. I was always fourth. Right. <laughs> this is second. Well, that was the second. Excellent. And then I was 1910. 1910, that's the first, that's in 1981. Yeah. And these are Will Fulbert's yeah. kit at 20 hours. The first person to do 20 hours. Mm. 
And it took from 1912 to 1963, is it? Yeah, it's 63, June, June 22nd. 64. No, 63, June, yeah. To the 20 hours. 20 hours, yeah. That's some achievement. That's a long day flying 82. He was second with 18 hours 40 minutes. Right, that is is that's Bentley West, isn't it? Yeah, that was the club I was in. Yeah. 18. Yeah, and that's Bentley West again. 1913. Yeah. And the third. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are again Bentley West. With Floyd, mate. Hmm. We won it that time. 18, 1848, 20 or 1 again. 85. Yeah. Thomas Club. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Right, Old Hall, invitation tip of the club. That's 1987 floor, you've done 18 hours there, 1840, 1854. That's it, you've got to take a ball, that's just a few. Yeah, that's all, yeah, 16, 16 plus hours there. Brilliant. The, uh, that was the yeah, and then was uh, the kit that Colin Bristow played. Yeah, and he, he broke the record with. Uh, yeah, 20, that, hours. twenty yeah twenty hours twelve minutes on nineteenth of June nineteen ninety four. That's his, that was uh, That's the Colin kit. Bristow's kit of pigeons at double time. See if you break the record, you have your birds put up. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All clubs do that, I think. Yeah. There's more than one. Yeah, 16-4, that's 1999. National Chip Union Diplomas. Yeah, that's 1941, that's in 99. That's Young Bird. Right, Jim, for now, uh, for some commonly asked uh, questions that you, you know, about the birds, and I'm sure the, uh, the Tipler folk across the globe uh, would really be interested to know some of these. Uh, how did you become associated with Tipperies and how long has it been? Oh, well, I've had pigeons. Oh dear, I must have been 10 or 11 back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And I used to have kits of muffies. And when I first came here, I had a kit of muffies. And then I was watching one or two. And I was never interested in races and Tipperies, but I, I did. Quite some years ago. I, Catch two the flu noise. Hmm. I mean, I've been watching the skies around here for years and one or two at Bentley and my mate Clarky, he had soup and uh, he said there was nah, no nah, good, you're going to kill him. <laughs> but that was bred out of Alberts. Right. So I had them and I started and then meeting one or two of the guys, went and seen Albert. And I had some off Albert. And that's how it all started, really. And then the first club I ever joined was uh, William Old Club in 1979. The shed's been up since 1978, believe it or not. That's wow. it. And I've been flying pigeons out, out of that shed since 1978. And that's some time, that's a mystery. That's a mystery. So I got involved and I thought, well, oh no, one of the two tricks, I can have a little go at that. Hmm. But I done my 959. I missed the novice cup. In them days, it was either two old and one young, whichever three was the oldest times. It's only three flies in the novice cup. Ah, oh, right, okay. And I missed that hmm. by a few minutes. The person who you're going to see next, he won it. <laughs> okay, Paul. Paul. Paul Green. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you do you do nine fifty nine. You're still a novice. Mm. You know, me, when, if you done ten hours and a bit, you want a novice now, more. Mm. Then you're up into the big league and you got to the big boys. Try, yeah. big, the big boys. Back in the day, it yeah. was a lot of them were about. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jack and Paul and yeah, yeah, yeah. Of them, them and So what 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 was it like flying? I mean, knowing that you're competing with those names. Oh well. You, you just got to try your best, and mm. the thing is, if if something don't work, you have to alter it and get it to suit. I mean, some birds like the flat, and other birds like the lift off the wind, and things like this. And mm. it's all things that you got to learn. Mm. 
down here, I've been quite happy with my lobbies, but they get too high, and they're all bait really. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I started, and it was uh, Roy Down, our club secretary then, and a damn good secretary. Ken was here already in, and Tex was already in. I think it started in 1976, mm -hmm. and I joined in 1979. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, how did you acquire your tipplers, and from whom did you get the tipplers? Well, I had a couple of my mate, Cliff, but I took them ring numbers, and I went straight back to Albert to confirm mm. that what I got was love it. I had some of Albert himself. Who used to, like I say, used to breed a, a few for Will Floyd. Did you have any other birds in your life at any time that had Will's rings on? Did I? Did you have any birds at any time in the loft had which had Will's? Uh, not Will's. Not Will's. Albert's. Yeah. Albert's rings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they were directly, obviously, from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fired at Albert. Right. Brilliant. And uh, the, the, I mean, obviously, this is a tricky part. A lot of losses are sort of uh, suffered by a tip, a tip, you know, the fanciest a tipperman. Uh, so, if I was to ask you, and for the obviously for the uh, for the season as well as the novice uh, uh, tipperman out there, uh, what's the best way, and how do you actually settle your tippers? Well, when I first part them, these are still young. Mm -hmm. I still give them best cool. Right. And then I start weaning them off a bit at a time from the best to what I, I've always used is just wheat and barley. Hmm. Right. Is that when you're weaning them off? When I finish weaning them off, ah, right, okay. I'll get them down to wheat Reason and barley. Yeah. 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 And believe it or not, I've never had to starve one of those to break a little bit. I mean, some people even a week without wheat, wheat uh, without water. And food, but not with them. I could give them just a spoonful, say, the night before, and I'd have them out the next day. Because mm. they got some brains. Always, I don't give up on them because anybody who's flying chipplers, don't give up on them, but always look for them about two hours before dark mm -hmm. because they will come over and show. And if you're not there, then you you miss the opportunity. But Nine times out of ten, you'll always see them the next day. I've come, got up early and they've been on the ship mm. and mm. they've never... So, um, in your opinion, so what are the most important uh, traits that you look for when you select a kit? Well, you'll see them standing there, you'll see which is the best. Mm. I'll be there. Right. I'll be alert. Posture. Awareness. I'm, I'm looking around. When put them in the flight, I'm looking around. Mm. I don't, it's nice to leave them in the flight for a week. You can mm. even feed and water them in the flight. So, so long as they're in that flight and looking around, and they can see where they are, nine times out of ten, that you get them back. Mm. Uh, but the ones that are sitting up like that, you have to watch when they do come out, they don't just whoosh. whoosh yeah. There's a lot of energy, isn't it? That's, uh, that, that's a sign of waiting. activity. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's club. Really, they don't know what they're doing. Hmm. That's why I always say, if a young one, they'll, they'll fly just for fun of it, especially on a nice day. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, uh, so when do you actually begin, after you've been them off and whatnot, uh, when do you actually uh, begin training them? You start looking ready on the wing. Right, right. When they've dropped one that eight weeks old, they should be out. Right, right, right. If, right, you, right. if you, if, I mean, you've got to be keen you know, down one or two things about them. But, but the early sign, is when they've dropped one. Them plenty of enough to have out. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you have them out before they can fly. Put them out straight away. Hmm. And they, they shouldn't come. Because they, they ain't got the they ain't got the blooming energy to get going. They. No, no, no. That's why for the lift, people, yeah. um, it's like say through the belly, it's to the brain. Through the brain, absolutely. So uh, keep them. Don't get too much cool. Mm -hmm. Enough. Two teaspoons is enough. Right, right. So oh, obviously half an ounce. Half an ounce. Instead of an ounce. A measure. <laughs> <laughs> a measure. Yes. A measure is an ounce. Yes. So, uh, 
how, how would you know and how do you know that's uh, when your tip is on form? Down in feathers are coming out. Mm -hmm. Little white down in feathers. Right, and that's your indication? Uh, that's a good indication. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, look, a lot of fences have different preferences. And uh, now, which would you rather fly in the competition? Hands, cocks, or a mixture? A mix of both? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't? It doesn't matter. I fly the hoop kit of ends. They, the ends are well kit, nice and tight. Mm -hmm. You fly the cocks, and they'll slap happy all day. One here, one there. But as soon as you can see them, in the air, whatever, well, it don't take an hour to find a pigeon. If he's got for nearly an hour, there's some at room. Obviously. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, the ends, I was, the one that I was up the top here talking to somebody, and it was dark. Hmm. The flipping little buggers nearly landed on the top shed. Oh. So I was come on away, come on away, get down, get down the garden, keep quiet. The bleeding ends will land up here. Yeah. Right. But that's. That's through paying them in the box, getting them bonds here. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And so, I mean, obviously you mentioned dark training, dark, or getting them into dark. Now, do you train uh, to or into dark? What's, uh, what's, what, what is your method of uh, dark training? Well, if there are youngsters and you fly them out in the daytime, and they're a bit naff, turn them out again until the street lights come on. And then put your shed lights on, and then get them down. And then if you want to, keep them on the floor with the lights on, and play them on the shed. Right, with, the, with the droppers then? With the droppers, obviously. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes I used to bring them up here, up to the top of the house here, in the dark, and just loose them. I can only sit on the shed, loose them. And then it's up to me. When I get them down. The week before long day, Sunday, three o'clock in the afternoon, midnight. Wednesday always was my last fly. Some people do Tuesday, give them extra days rest. Mm -hmm. Put them up at three o'clock. Clock like me, didn't drop till three o'clock on Thursday. Yeah. I had got to feed them up for Sunday. Yeah. It took about Sunday and I only did 20 hours, I was expecting more. Mm. But that was me. Right. Not the pigeons. No, no one no. always blame the pigeons. No. It could be you. Brilliant. And uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, obviously in the racing world, they use uh, an artificial means uh, in the loft to affect the flight feather mold on the birds. I've never done it. I'll let them do it natural. Right, because uh, that's what I fly yeah. them natural. Right, right. Oh, right. oh, I had used to get three pieces of board on the, for the last two or three days, put the board up so I was arrested. Yeah. But never to introduce the malt. Right. I would rather fly natural. Right. None of this dark system. No, no, yeah. I mean, some of the, obviously, these practices are... Of course, they only throw the flights out. Yeah. But they still got all the body feathers. Of course they do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like them too. I like it natural. Hmm. No, I can, I, can, I can imagine that. Yeah, I think that's the general consensus. But a lot of people one. will dark them. Right, okay. So as they throw all the floods. Right, right. Yeah, right. but they've still got all the bodies left. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, might be so. So, you upset the natural, or the mountain, mm -hmm. straight away. I love natural flying anyway. So, right. everybody's, yeah, it's to everybody's choice. Yeah, yeah. Each to their own course, yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Each to their own. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, what, I mean, what's your system of dropping? I mean, what type of droppers do you keep and why do you keep that type of droppers? Well, if uh, everybody got white ones, mm -hmm. I would change my kit to yellow ones. And then when everybody has yellow ones, I'll go back to the white ones. I can, I can, I can if everybody's got white droppers, yes. everything's the same. Of course it is. So the old pigeons could go down there. Yes, especially so this is tip of country where you are. Well, it was. was. was, I mean, was. You know, and, uh, it was. There was over 32 members there. Right. And there was that's a lot oh, of Bentley. Hmm. We also have more than that in the club. Yeah, yeah I think now we've got the biggest club in England is uh, Central Brown. Yes, it's right. getting there. Yeah, it's, but it's, we had fourteen members last year. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And no, but these are these when you're looking at I and mean, what you're talking about back then, 
People were serious liars. They were serious oh, yes. liars. Yeah, you know? yeah. But it's only that thing that's faulty. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It has a lot of people back up. Yeah, there's rising people packing in now because of same thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's just that every time the the losses the losses are humongous. Yeah, they are now. Know? Yeah, they are. So I mean, yeah, I've had a similar issue. If, you know. if I lose a pigeon, I lose it. If I see the orc have it, I'll put it down to the orc. If I don't see it happen, I've lost it. Right, 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 right. Because right. a lot of people blame the orc. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, but that that. Uh, but if the don't see it happen, you can't, you can't, you can't accept it. You can't accept no. it. You know. And what sort of what type of uh, what breed of droppers do you keep? Anything white? Anything a tumbler. I used to have a kicker muffins dropping on at one time. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. of people have muffins, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they haven't got enough now. Mm. I mean, you yeah, ain't got to keep the feet clean. I mean, if the plane leaked, it's sexy. It's the muffins. They get dirty. The, the wolves. Mm. I used to have to cut cut them off to breed. Otherwise, the wolves could actually kill the youngsters. Yeah. Once it, you know. Yeah. So I always took two. Right, 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 right. That's a good idea. Good but idea. Um, any dropper that I play, which some won't play even if they're hungry. Mm. Like yeah, them. yeah, so you've got to be very selective in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, your feed up, your feed for your flyers now, what determines your selection of grains and seeds yeah. used? What really what it, It's got to be nice clean. Right. Don't, clean food and clean water is the main thing. Now, they're all about feeding them all. You just do a lot of the rice in them. Break and build. Mm. Break and build. Salt them out, or whatever you want to use. I always start with the weakest seed, wheat barley. Mm. Bit the best stuff around off with seed. Yeah, it's simple. Just build it up. Yeah. Right. So the method would be that obviously, look, uh, every flyer has his method, and they yeah, would not like to share it. But I mean, I, I wouldn't ask you to do that. That's not the question here. Or what, what I'm asking. And a, a, so. bit, a bit of tonic, iron tonic, iron tonic, yeah. Or the uh, glucose powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electrolyte powder, as they call it. Yeah, as a, well, don't use them. Yeah. No need to. It's uh, a tonic. If it's uh, a tonic for the child, it's good enough for a baby. For a baby. Yeah. 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 Not too strong. Yeah. So when do you actually, when does your feed up start? When do you actually start before the competition? To build when, the Wednesday, say, three day build up, round off with seed on Saturday. Right. Yeah. But there's obviously, prior to that, there's training going on. Well, well the training going on, well, a lot of people use depurity. Yeah, yeah. I've never used it. If I want depurity, if I sit and breathe away now, get me out. Right. White and red dye and add white barley to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. It is, it is. Yeah. yeah. And how would you care for the birds after they fly, after they've been up for, uh, on the wings? And uh, let's just say the competition they, they've come back, or after training, when you're running them, building them up. How would you uh, care for them after they come back? On a fly day? Yeah. Well, I'd just leave them to rest for a half hour or so and then give some best call. Right. If they're late. But <coughs> it, it, it's one of them, you're going to give them too much and the throw up, mm -hmm. it's best to give them a bit of seed, really, that yeah. would be the best call. Because, I mean, some daft people, they'll pod you up, I don't know what, lose them out, mm -hmm. and they go on the roof, throw up, and then they fly all day. It's too late, you know. <laughs> Too few. That's all I want to say. So um, you mentioned that these lofts have been there since 1978. So how big, how big are the lofts, and uh, what what is your uh, loft management system? How do you actually manage the whole space? And uh, within that, if I can, if I may, I can throw a few few more in there. Uh, so what's the total number of pigeons that you would house? You know, and no more than fifty. No more than fifty. And it's a twenty-four foot shed. Yes. So I will keep twelve for stock. Mm -hmm. There's roughly about 20 droppers. Yeah, yeah. And if I've got 20 young birds, that'll do, man. That'll do, yeah. Yeah. And I clean out three times a week. Right. Pigeons in a box cup, get done every other day. Mm -hmm. Put them in the flight. Well, they're the stock, and they eat many, they still need a flight. Mm -hmm. So I still put a bath in for them. Mm -hmm. The same on the other little flight that I fly out of. 
Yeah, yeah. There's a in there now. Yeah, I can see that as well. Yeah. 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 Well, it helps because they're molten. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had much trouble. Like I said, I only had a bit of trouble in 2000 with them. I'd mm. got a two dog fetching a pigeon back that had been in somebody's shed with me, a youngster. Right. Uh, I mean, you've, you've mentioned that you know you never you never inoculated, you never jabbed the birds at all? No. Never ever? No. Because yeah. I never ever get anything in. Absolutely. Well, so it's a cat stick. It's, right got, it's got an NTU ring on, I'll do it, try and find out. I, I, I reported that to fetch it. A 2014 bird. Mm -hmm. Fell and packed in, so. But he didn't give him much in. Went in a box, then give him much in. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, now moving on to like, you know, breeding. I mean, um, <clears throat> you mentioned that you would probably, uh, what would you do about six, six pairs? So uh, seven, you mentioned you could oh, keep seven. Seven, seven, this seven year, pairs. The six is plenty. Six is plenty. If you have three rounds, you could get 30 birds without knocking them about and then part them. Right. We part them for nearly six months in it. Mm. September, October, November, December, January, pair of Valentine's Day. Right, oh, brilliant. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah I like to be in that loft on that day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, now, what, what's, what method do you use? I mean, uh, when you breed, I mean, is it uh, in family, family pairings, or best to best? What do you do? Oh, all spare best to best, but right. now they're getting that close. Family to family, the way I'm going on. Right. I, I have always paired best to best. Right, so, okay. And they always saw him stick it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, how close is too close in your breeding program then? Half brother, half sister. That's too close. Yeah. Right. But it, it'll come to that. Yeah. But what do you. But it's, it's still not like any like line breeding, any lady mother, and right. whatever. So, would I'm, you? I'm getting close now. Yeah. Right. But right. I do prefer best to best. Best to best. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, what do you feed your breeders? I mean, does the diet change during the winter months or seasonal? Oh, no, certainly. They don't right. get best corn in the winter. They don't right. get nothing sitting there. Right, yeah. Get it right in barley and spread yourself. Right, fair enough. I mean, so, it's getting ticky. Yeah. So what 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 brand or do you make you buy your own separate season and make it according to uh, your ratio or what what products well, do you in, use? In the past, I have uh, jars and jars, diff, diff, yeah, uh, seeds, yeah. blank and everything, red, black, red. Nah, no nah, more. Keep it plain and simple. Mm -hmm. You can buy a quarter pound of everything. Yeah, and just mix it. Mix it, so. yeah. yeah. I tend to do that. I've got a conditioner, I think. Yeah, yeah make it out. Yeah, it's a good boy, Anna. See, from anywhere. It costs me about own. forty quid. Red band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make your own. It costs me about forty quid, but at least I know exactly. Well, forty quid. I spent three quid in the last bit of the flying season. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I make, <laughs> yeah. I make about four, uh, thirty, yeah, don't twenty-eight. Don't them every day. Twenty-eight. Be used to it. Yeah. And then when you try to build them up, they're only getting the same as what they've been having all. So there won't be any so what you so 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 nutritional benefit. Yeah, so there oh, won't be any traditional benefit uh, nutritional. For really? Yeah, just give them the same as what they've always had. Absolutely. So that's a that's a very crucial point, guys. If you like just what Jim just said that look, if if the bot gets used to that particular seed and the nutrients, it gets so yeah. the whole idea of that feed up is to boost. Yeah. You know, to build them up, to actually to boost them. Well, that's what it is, to build them. Exactly. So if they are so there's so actually you're not already on it. You know, yeah, uh, exactly. Spots on, spots on, spot on, spot on, absolutely spot on. Right now, uh, uh, in, in you know, I know it's difficult, but what is your favourite tipler strain, and why is it your favourite tipler strain? Well, I've, I've been, I've been to Jacks, obviously. Yeah. And I've, Jack, I've been to Jacks, and I've been to all the muses. Jacks seem a bit big for me. Good news is a little bit thin. Mm. I mean, well, I have seen them no bigger than a stall, no fatter than a stall. Mm -hmm. There's one of my friends when you go to the hotel. My love it's nice head, short beak, short in the leg. It's in between the both. Mm. And the feathers of those are nice and broad. 
That's all they did, all they did. Right. Oh, friggin' all you gotta do. Screw. So, well, I know you know this old man keeps saying, hold on, but I don't think he'd tell anybody a lie. He kept them in the cupboard, either side of the fireplace, mm -hmm. through the wall, when you shouldn't be keeping pigeons. So the racing pigeons have come home with the messages. There was no, I don't know. Yeah. So everybody had to get rid of the birds. And he fed them on toast and oatmeal or whatever he could get. And he kept them through. So I like, I like, I like the lovers. I suppose everybody did the same mm. when the couple lived somewhere through the war. But yeah, I like the lovers. And I've stuck to them ever since. They're all fly. Yeah, yeah. If you can get it out of them, I mean, you know what you're doing. They'll all fly the times. Mm. I mean, they ain't all of it times in the records. Mm. The Jack Owens, yeah. the Uses, yeah. and the old, all the older Olden, the Meredith, and that's. Yeah, no, I've got some. I think uh, it was 1957. Uh, 19, I was 42. Yep. And then it was 1959, we've 20 hours then, and uh, then if you go, oh, these are the old birds by the way. Yeah, old birds. Yeah, 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 and in 1961, uh, we've had uh, 70 and a half hours. Um, so, really, when you think about it, we we gone that far in front. Yeah. There's only one or two people that have done more than 20 hours. Mm -hmm. 22, isn't it? Now? Yeah, 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 yeah. This must have been ex exceptional then. It is, it is, it is, it is but definitely. He's got more to wear. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Jim, uh, any suggestions that uh, you think that could improve the tip of sport? Well, as it is, it, it, it isn't too bad. It, it, it's just the odd few that spoil it, really. I mean, it's been a lovely sport without the orc. I mean, fantastic. We, I think we had the best 70s, 80s, 90s, up to 2000. After that, it's just... If people should just be honest with themselves, you know, I mean, they say they've done this and they've done that, and some you can believe, some you can hardly believe. If they was to follow the rules, and they've done it right, there be no arguments with them. No. It's just what it's to try to bend them to suit themselves. Mm. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they don't need improvement. It's all right as it is, or well, it has been, put it that way. Mm. I mean, there has been some good honest people there, some good old flyers that were cheating for. The, well, what's the use of cheating for the three pound fucking trail fee? Hmm, that's true. Might as well go and buy one and have me put up. Mm. Now, now, sometimes some people are help and others well. It's just animosity sometimes that spoils it. That's all. Plenty of that, that. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's all it is. Just keep it plain and simple. Do what you're supposed to. No, we get to it. So, uh, what would be your top three tips? From your experience with tipplers? Keep them lean, no. treat them mean, don't feed them, teach them what to do, not what they want to do. The pigeons are one about, not yes. people. No, no, no. <laughs> so discipline. Yeah, yeah. Keep them disciplined, keep them, yeah? Yeah, yeah. okay. Keep them clean. Important, isn't it? That's. Just keep the water and food clean, that's all. Mm. That's your corn on the floor, on to muck, and then they've got to pick it up and feed the youngsters. They're asking for trouble out there. Of course they are. Yeah, Don't you. leave corn about. Mm. Arbor's moist. Yeah. Pigeons get bad. Mm. You know, uh, you're, you're just defeating the object. If you think you're going to fly, treating the birds like that, you don't have a freaking chance. Right. Now, Sincerely, your message for the novice now, just to wrap things up here. If you're going to start up, 
look round, the type of pigeon you like, get your shed ready first, the loft, and then go buy what you like and what you're going to enjoy. And I was saying, these are the best, black outside, blue badges, but if you like up, have them. It's in there, pigeons will fly, you just matter get any set. Mm. And when you when you're training, half a measure. Half a measure. Half a measure. When you're building them up, keep the ends. That feed them the same, but that extra core, boostable. Couple of days rest, still do. Sometimes they fly up just by resting. Yeah. Right. Right, Jim. Uh, listen, uh, that sums it up here. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, thank you very much for having us here today. That's it's been an honour. And, uh, you know, uh, honestly, the birds are a credit to you. <clears throat> and I've seen them, and uh, they were beyond expectation. That's the first time I've seen your birds, so uh, beyond expectation. I really well, love them. That's exactly what I say to the novice. Mm. You've never seen them. You think they're great now. Well, that's what you've got to do. You've got to go out and have a look. Mm. See what you like. And then start flying. Right. right, so thank you very much, sir. So it's goodbye from uh, me, and it's uh, goodbye from him. I see.